Hi, I'm Chip. Today we're going to be exploring the workings of this device. It's called a LB water valve and it can be found on most household appliances that require water as part of their function. And they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they all work about the same. So if your washing machine, your dishwasher, your refrigerator has a water supply problem, well, this is probably going to be the cause of it. So let's go down the shop. We'll tear one of these apart, see how it works, and I'll give you some ideas on how to fix it. Okay, today we're going to be uh, disassembling a valve similar to this. I'm not going to disassemble this one. This is a good valve that I, I want to use, but I have a broken one over here that will disassemble and, and take apart and show you what the components are. This is called an LB valve. This one comes goes on a, the old school style washers and uh, they're really a, a nice piece of engineering. These are uh, called uh, semi-direct acting. They combine the features of a direct and an indirect type valve. So let's take one apart and I'll, I'll show you. Now this one went on a, a typical style washing machine and uh, it, it, uh, it has a defective coil on it and I'll show you one way you can tell that. I'm going to take this coil off. And you can just pry up from the bottom and these these piston guys on here have these little indents on it that grab the end of that coil to keep it on. But if you look at this coil here, it's got a crack in it. You can see that crack. And that crack is uh, an indication that uh, the, the, uh, the, the windings inside the coil are broken and uh, it won't it won't pull the, the piston up and open the diaphragm so uh, the way to test these coils is a continuity test we'll do it on this valve here I'll pull out my trusty fluke meter so what you want to do when you're testing continuity is you look for that little symbol right there that's a, the Greek Omega symbol and uh, that's what you would grab for, for continuity. And if I keep the glare off of the screen, you can see you can see what happens when you test for continuity and you take your test leads. These leads are awful stiff. It's really cold in the shop today. If you put your leads together, you can see what it does to the display. And if you have a good valve you can uh, test from our good coil you can test from one side to the other and it shows good continuity. The one thing I need to point out if you have a, a multimeter that has a an audible feature like that where you get an audible tone if you have that turned on and you're trying to check for continuity of a coil You have to be be careful with that. So t make sure you're. So I can touch. I can touch the lead. But I can't touch the coil. Now if I turn the audible signal off, and I look at the digital display, that the coil tests good. Now I don't know why that is. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that does. And if they could explain it in the comments, I'd be I'd be much appreciated. I'd love to know. I've asked several people and they just don't seem to know. I think it doesn't work on testing diodes like that either. But anyway, this uh, this is the valve body. It's got some two screens in it, or it should have screens in it. And these screens help form material, keeps it from getting up into the workings of the valve itself. In that valve, there's a diaphragm. Let's take this one apart. All right, I've already taken the the coil off of it and let's see if I can get my fingers no. there's a tool they make that you can buy on the internet for about ten dollars and I think it's called an LB valve tool anyway I always used a, a pair of uh, long needle nose pliers you can just grab these indents right here and put your the points of your and just give it a quick turn to loosen that, that uh, piston guy. 
Now there's several parts in here. Now this is called the piston guide. And I'll show you why in a, in a minute. And this is gonna be, it's, it has a valve seat, I mean a, a diaphragm seat up in here. And also one on the, on the uh, piston guide. Now this diaphragm will come out of here and you have a diaphragm and on this diaphragm the way this valve works it's got micro orifices some hot rodder outside you got a couple of you've got four micro orifices around this diaphragm that allows the water to go from both sides of it uh, but when it's closed when it's closed, this, this diaphragm is pushed around this um, lip right here. And, but the, uh, these micro orifices allow the pressure of the water to go on both sides of this valve. Now this little piston and that, that fits in here, it's a little steel piston and it's got a rubber uh, piece on the end of it. So it can seal this this little orifice in the center here, and it sits on a spring. If you can see that spring, it's a looks like it goes in a spring, kind of like it goes in a fountain pen. <clears throat> but anyway, how this works is there's there's uh, equal pressure on both sides of this diaphragm, and the diaphragm sitting on the valve body lip inside right inside here <clears throat> and it's keeping a seal there and it's also sitting on this lip right here so when this when this piston is pulled upward by the uh, coil it comes off this little uh, orifice right here this little orifice here is larger than the, the small orifices on the outside of the of the diaphragm and what will happen as the water pressure becomes lower on this side of, and it it acts as, it acts to lift that diaphragm off of the valve body, and water will flow through the valve. It's either off or on. It's no there's no, there's no regulation of it. It's just it's going to be wide open or shut. So this it's a really neat piece of engineering and the reason they do it this way is you have like 60 to 80 pounds of pressure on your city water or your rural water system and this little spring right here is is not strong enough to hold back 60 or 80 pounds so it has to be that, that sort of system now when it's closed there's no electricity on it and this that spring is holding this little piston over that orifice it makes a high pressure side on on the top side of the the valve or the top side of the diaphragm and when it's pulled back you get low pressure on it and it lifts off of the valve body and water flows through it's really simple but ingenious and th this is called the piston guide because the spring fits in there and it guides the piston straight straight up and down so you can take these apart and clean them out sometimes it's usually these little micro orifices on this and you can't see them through this camera but there's four little micro orifices around the rim of this of this diaphragm and they usually get plugged up with silt or, or whatnot and it can't can't function right so that's the mechanical part of this you put these back together and they make kits uh, LB valve replacement kits for these you can rebuild them and uh, uh, the way this is put back together, the spring goes in first. And there is a rubber end on the piston. Make sure the rubber end is out. Put that back in. Then you want to put the diaphragm on top of that. And then you want to just fit it all back in and screw it together. Make sure it's tight. Now, for a bonus, if you're in the field or perhaps you're a do it yourself or uh, the things about washing machines is a washing machine has a hot water valve and a cold water valve. The cold water valve gets more of the workload than any of them because all modern washing machines rinse 
all the rinses are in cold water. You can see that here. And so this, this valve gets operated more than this one. So if you select hot wash on your washing machine, the first time the washing machine puts water in the, in the tub, it's gonna be hot water. It's gonna wash and it's gonna pump out the hot water and it'll go into the rinse cycle. Then the cold water valve will come on. Now, if your cold water valve doesn't come on, your washing machine just stops because there, you know, it can't get water in it, it's not gonna work. So it just sits there and, and does nothing. So uh, most of the time, if there's a valve problem, it's gonna be the cold water valve. But if you're in the field and you don't have another valve body like this, and the customer really needs to get back into business, or if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't want to use hot water anyway, just pull the, pull the coil off the hot water side and put it on the cold water side and put the old uh, coil over here hook it back up and it, if it you know it'll work fine as long as you have cold cold washes if you have cold wash and cold rinses it'll work fine if you, now if you try to use the hot water wash it's just going to sit there and not fill because uh, your coil's bad but these coils are interchangeable pumps what I'm saying, you can take this coal, put it on this side, this coal, put it on this side, and you can orient the direction of these of, of these uh, spade connectors any way you need. You can put I put them in cabinets. Sometimes you'll get a, a a valve and it looks like this. And I had a a guy was helping me one day. He said that's the wrong valve because these other valves are are in this configuration like this. Well, just twist it to that configuration. That's all you need to do. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not connected to anything at all. All it does is pr produce a magnetic field. Anyway, that's today's video, and I hope you liked it, and I'll catch you on the next one.